without further ado, tonight is the night where we are going to be talking about the spirit and exposing the spirit of Leviathan. We're not just going to be talking about this demonic spirit that every one of us have encountered. I've encountered it many times, but we're going to be giving you strategy on how to overcome the spirit of Leviathan. Friend, I'm telling you, there is a spirit that is lurking and that is dwelling right now. It is alive and well in the earth, and that is the spirit of Leviathan. I've dealt with this spirit so many times. Oftentimes, the problem with Leviathan is we try to deal with Leviathan in the natural, and these demonic spirits that we've been preaching about, these demonic powers we've been talking about, these rulers, Ephesians 6 talks about, in the unseen realm can only be be dealt with in the spiritual realm many of you in here tonight you might click out of this broadcast but what you need to understand is that tonight we are preaching to the spiritual realm the bible says that we preach to principalities that we preach to rulers and powers and so guys as i'm preaching the word of god is like a sledgehammer to the kingdom of darkness the word of god breaks down hell's gates there is power as we preach there is power as we prophesy there is power as we declare the word of god God begins to move. God begins to shake. God begins to break. And so tonight, I believe we're going to put the spirit of Leviathan, the Bible calls him a fling serpent, but we're going to put him on the run because we are going to destroy him. Some of you say, well, why are you going to spend the next hour talking about him? Because you can't fight something you know nothing about. You can't overcome something when you don't know the strategies or the download on it. That's why Paul says, don't be ignorant to the enemy's devices or the enemy's strategies for if you're ignorant he'll have an advantage over you so the way that we get the advantage taken away from leviathan is by preaching on him and teaching on him now leviathan is in the bible obviously many different places but he's pictured in the bible i want you to get a picture of what leviathan looks like according to scripture as a large sea serpent if you guys saw my flyer you said isaiah are you being fictitious and what is that flyer is that a dragon that is a sea serpent i was trying to figure out how could we get a picture to look like Leviathan? He is a large sea serpent that is described in Job 41. You're going to find this over and over and over again. And much of what we talk about tonight is going to be out of Job 41. So if you want to open up your Bible, if that's what you're, you're doing tonight, you can open a Job 41 where the Bible is going to describe God himself is speaking to Job and is going to describe the spirit of Leviathan. God asked Job these questions concerning Leviathan. He starts out by saying, can you catch Leviathan with a hook? Can you put a, a, a noose around its jaw? Can you tie with a rope through its nose or pierce its jaw with a spike? Will it beg for mercy or will it beg you for pity? God is describing the spirit of Leviathan. And in, in other words, God is telling Job, Job, you cannot deal with this in the natural realm. You can't hook it with a fish's hook. You can't catch this thing in a net. You can't catch him with a hook. This is something that is spiritual, Job. And this is something that must be dealt with in the spiritual realm. This is something that must be captured and must be exposed in the spiritual realm. It's going. To, it's not going to help for you to try to deal with these things in the natural realm. Many of you are exhausted even now because you've been trying to deal with these things in the natural realm. You've been trying to deal with anxiety in the natural. You've been trying to deal with depression in the natural. You've been trying to deal with fear in the natural. You've been trying to deal with the spirit of confusion in the natural, and you're trying medications and remedies and therapists and counselors but God says you can't counsel these demons out you can't medicate these demons out but these things come on let's hit share right 850 these things must be dealt with in the spiritual realm it is essential that we know how to deal with these things in the spiritual realm because you'll never be able to overcome them in the natural realm medicine is not going to help a demon it might medicate the demon it might calm the demon down but it's not going to deliver you arguments are not going to help you against leviathan friend therapists are not going to help you against leviathan deliverance is how you overcome this this is something that must be overcome in the spiritual realm now centuries ago there were tales of leviathan and there probably still are today of uh, being this large sea creature and in the picture that we we see in mythology and in history is it was this large sea creature that would destroy ships or that would shipwreck sailors psalms 104 26 talks about this remember we're gonna give you over 60 verses tonight but psalms 104 26 talks about it and it says there go the ships and leviathan which you form to plane it so psalms is talking about ships and then Leviathan is swimming by the ships. Leviathan is a, write this down, a marine spirit. Tonight, we're not going to go into depth on all the different marine spirits. We'll do that on another day. 
But just know that Leviathan is a water spirit or is a uh, marine spirit. Leviathan was known as an ocean dwelling creature. One of his main goals, the spirit of Leviathan, as we're starting this, and we're just, we're just warming up here, is to cause you to shipwreck. He wants to shipwreck your ministry. Am I preaching to anybody tonight? He wants to shipwreck your marriage. He wants to shipwreck your prayer life. He wants to shipwreck your faith. You have to understand the spirit of Leviathan is a ship wrecking spirit it's a marriage ruining spirit it's a friendship breaking spirit it's a ministry destroying spirit the spirit of leviathan someone says you hear baby i don't i don't hear a baby if you if you hear a baby let me know there should be no baby coming through the speakers here but the spirit of leviathan is a, a spirit that wants to shipwreck you now paul talks about this in first timothy 1 19 paul says cling to your faith in christ and keep your conscience clear for somehow have deliberately deliberately violated their conscience and as a result Paul says their faith has been shipwrecked Paul is describing people that have been destroyed by the spirit of Leviathan good and everyone's saying no baby sound okay praise the Lord Paul is describing people that have been destroyed by a Leviathan spirit he says you violated your conscience and in turn you have shipwrecked your faith he will cause you the spirit of Leviathan and I'm just giving you an intro on him, will cause you to violate your conscience. This is the intrinsic thing God has programmed it in you that is giving you the ability to know the difference between right and wrong. How many know that an atheist could tell the difference between something that is right and something that is wrong? Because this is something that God has hardwired into us called your conscience. But see, what Leviathan does is he causes you to violate your conscience. And once you violate the wrong and right meter in, in God, that God God is programmed into you then you will be shipwrecked in your faith understand Isaiah 5 20 talks about this it says what sorrow are those who say that evil is good and good is evil that dark is light and that light is dark that bitter is sweet and that sweet is bitter you have to understand the Bible says clearly that there is coming a day where men will call what is bad good and men will call what is good bad and friend that is the generation that we are living in this is the landscape of the American church. If you preach righteousness, if you preach holiness, if you preach consecration, if you preach a line in the sand, they are going to call you crazy. They are going to call you too radical. Meanwhile, the most popular pastors in our country party and drink and live however they want. And guys, right now there's a massive cleaning. I won't go into this, but there's a massive cleaning coming to the house of God. Ministers are being exposed at an alarming rate because God God is cleaning his church. So many of these pastors have shipwrecked their faith by going against what God has said is wrong. We are living in the hour where people are calling the preaching of righteousness wrong and calling compromise right. We are living in an hour where pastors are okay to drink and to sleep around and to listen and watch whatever they want to. I'm going, God, where is the standard in the church? Is this not the case? That Leviathan, come on, who am I preaching to? That Leviathan has wormed his way into the church right now has wormed his way into the body of Christ and is destroying and shipwrecking ministers and ministries because of pride and arrogance and because we're calling that what God calls wrong right this is Leviathan at work in the earth now. This is a spirit that is a lurking spirit. This is a roaming spirit. Leviathan lurks in the waters. Now, what you need to understand about Leviathan and the fact that his dwelling place is the waters, you might say, well, what does it mean? What is the significance of the fact that he lives in the water? Well, water in the Bible is the imagery of the spirit moving. Is this good? Come on, it's the imagery of the spirit moving. The imagery of the move of God. When you see the moving of water, when you see representations of water, then you know that this is a representation of the spirit moving John 7 38 says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water this is the spirit in John 7 symbolized as water Revelation 22 1 John said then the angel showed me the river of the water of life that was brightest crystal that is flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb Zechariah 14 says on that day living waters will flow from Jerusalem 
Ezekiel talks about the waters that flowed from the temple. Isaiah 44, 3 says, I will pour out water on this thirsty land and my streams on dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon my offspring and my blessing on my descendants. Isaiah 12, 3 says, the joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. So what are we saying here? What's the point of all the verses? That water is symbolic of the spirit moving. Water is symbolic of the presence of God moving and manifesting on the earth. Now, why is this important that I'm saying this? Because you need to understand this before I start giving you this, the seven characteristics I'm going to give you tonight on the Viathan, but you need to understand. And by the way, this is one of those nights where you just need to call DoorDash get the Domino's delivery pizza because we're going to be going for it tonight. So don't miss out on this. Get pe get food delivered. Don't sit and try to cook dinner tonight. Okay. But I'm telling you, you need to understand this because Leviathan is not moving outside the move of God. Leviathan is moving inside the revival. He's moving inside the move of God. He's not out there moving out on the streets, but he's moving among God's people. Leviathan is a spirit. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight that lurks and moves among the move of God. Leviathan lurks in the revival. Leviathan lurks in your prayer life. Leviathan lurks wherever God is moving. You better know that Leviathan is lurking and is waiting to destroy you. He's waiting to attack you. Leviathan is a waiting spirit. Some of you know what I'm talking about because you said, Isaiah, for 10 years, I was fine. Then all of a sudden, one day I went and cheated on my wife. I went and did this. I went and did that. It was because Leviathan was lurking in the waters and was waiting for an opportune time to attack. The Bible says the devil is as a roaring lion. The lion, it waits, it lurks, it hides, and then it jumps on its unsuspecting victim. Leviathan is waiting to shipwreck and entrap you. This is why we must talk about this. I have seen so many in the last 10 years of ministry shipwreck their faith. I have seen so many fall. 2 Samuel 125 says how the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Woe, the mighty have fallen. How many men of God and ministers have we seen fall? What do they always fall to? They fall to pride. Pride is the root of all these sins we're going to talk about tonight. Pride is the, the most harsh besetting sin. Remember, it was pride that caused the devil to be cast out of heaven. So you need to understand that Leviathan works, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but Leviathan works in the realm of pride. Leviathan, like Jezebel, has destroyed the spiritual life of so many men of God. He has shipwrecked so many heroes of the faith. Many heroes of the faith have been shipwrecked by the lurking spirit of Leviathan. Now, what's important to note before I give you the seven characteristics that Job 41 describes Leviathan as the king over all the children of pride. Write, up, write that down. Leviathan is the king over all the children of pride. So the first thing we learn about Job 41 and Leviathan being the king over the children of pride is very important. The first thing we learn is that he is a high ranking spirit. How do we know this? Because the Bible says he is a king. Remember, kings are high ranking spirits. Oftentimes demons would be described as princes or kings. Well, where's that in the Bible. Daniel 10, the king of Greece was coming to fight Michael and the angel that delivered the message to Daniel. What did the angel say? He said, Daniel, I've been fighting the prince of Persia, which back in those days, the princes were above kings. He said, I've been fighting. Now Michael's up there fighting even as I speak. He said, and I'm going to go back. This is in Daniel 10. I'm going to go back and I'm going to fight the king of Greece. This was not a man that the spirit was going to fight. The angel was not going to fight the king. He was going to fight the demonic king, which was a spirit over Greece. And and so Leviathan is a territorial spirit. He's a king spirit and he's a high ranking spirit. So you need to know that he's a demonic king or a demonic prince. Okay, so that's the number one thing. The second thing we're going to learn is that Leviathan is a spirit, write this down, that rules over people who are proud. So Leviathan is a king, which means he's a high ranking spirit, but also kings have kingdoms. Every king that's ever lived has a kingdom or a realm which he has dominion. So we give place to Leviathan and we invite him to rule and reign in our life when we get into pride. So remember, Leviathan is a king that rules over those that are proud. How do you invite the, the spirit of Leviathan into your life? Is by pride. This is his open door. This is how he gets in. 
is a spirit that works in the realm of pride. I want you to have this in your mind. Come on, we're about to hit a thousand. Share the stream. I want you to have this in your mind as we're talking about Leviathan is that he is a puffed up spirit. Now I could go on five hours on this tonight. I won't. So I need you to have this picture. He's a puffed up spirit. He's a proud spirit. He's a spirit that despises the humble. He's a spirit that despises those that are meek. And I'm telling you, he has infiltrated the men of God in America. He has infiltrated many ministries and marriages and there is a spirit of ego of haughtiness and of pride that is infiltrated and I have the legal right to talk about this because I've been traveling for 10 years and one of the saddest, mo some of the saddest moments I've ever had were not on the streets, were not in hotels, they were in green rooms, looking at the puffed upness and the arrogance and the pride and the haughtiness of traveling preachers and celebrity pastors. Friend, I'm not bragging here. I've met some of the most famous pastors in the country and been so discouraged by how proud they are. If you know me personally, you know that my biggest pet peeve is pride. There's a lot of things I can stand, but I cannot stand proud, preachers. I cannot stand arrogant, prideful Christians. This is one thing I can't deal with. I believe it's one thing God can't deal with. So you know that Leviathan is a king. Leviathan has a desire to rule. Kings rule things. So Leviathan wants to rule your life. Every You have to understand that after today, after we preach, after we pray, I believe that Leviathan will no longer rule your life. I speak over you that Leviathan is no longer authorized to rule over you. We're going to pray prayers after of deliverance. I'm going to pray deliverance from Leviathan and over you, but I'm letting you know that tonight is the night to break this lurking spirit, the spirit that swims in the depths of the oceans waiting for an opportune time. And I thank God that God has given me wisdom and download. I'm not saying this arrogantly to expose Leviathan so that we can destroy him so that you can get freed and delivered in Jesus name. Remember, Leviathan is a serpent. Yes. And you have to remember that we've been given power over every serpent, including Leviathan, which the Bible calls a sea serpent. Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy that nothing will injure you. This is not talking about physical snakes now i know some people have taken this out of context and they handle snakes in the church that's not what he's saying he's saying i've given you power to tread on serpents which are demonic spirits we don't need to panic or be afraid because christ has given us power over the spirit of leviathan i know i posted a video of me doing deliverance some of, some of you were scared some of you wrote me say i say how are you not scared why would i be scared of demons if god has given us power and authority over demons it's time to break off fear remember when we go over job we're not talking about about natural beast or serpents but spiritual ones do not be afraid of Leviathan do not be afraid of the enemy God has given us power and God has conquered every serpent Ephesians 6 makes it clear that we're not fighting enemies with flesh and blood. Again, don't think of Leviathan as a beast. Some of you said Leviathan is not a spirit. He's just a mythological beast. No. Paul says we're not fighting flesh and blood. So when the Bible describes these creatures, it's not talking about flesh and blood sea serpents or scorpions. It's talking about rulers, powers, and forces of darkness. These are not natural enemies. This is not some creature in the ocean. This is a spirit that is lurking, waiting to attack. And so what I want to do is I want to get you seven things to write down the seven characteristics of Leviathan as I do this teaching tonight to help you to gain strategy and insight on the strategies of Leviathan seven strategies if you don't get all of them I'm gonna post them in the chat as I always do after I'll be very clear when we go into the next one and we just hit a thousand viewers praise the Lord that share this but I want you to write this down if you're just jumping in we're talking about the spirit of Leviathan this is what the Bible calls the king over the children of pride this is a demonic spirit that is at work in the church in pastors and leaders in the body of Christ. This is a spirit that moves in the waters. The first thing I got to show you about this and the way that Leviathan functions, we, we're, we're already taking way too long, is number one, write this down, the first characteristic is Leviathan twist the truth. Leviathan twists, that's twists the truth. Leviathan's name in Hebrew literally means twisted. It means the twisted serpent. And this is Leviathan's primary function is to twist words. Leviathan, the way that he works in people and churches is he twists conversations. Leviathan twists intentions. 
means. Uh, Leviathan is a manipulating spirit. Uh, Isaiah 27 1 says, The Lord will punish Leviathan, the twisted serpent, the dragon that lives in the sea. And so Leviathan is a twisting spirit. Uh, this is what Isaiah is describing him as. And something very interesting about the root word for the Hebrew word snake is that the Hebrew word or the primitive root word for snake literally translate to whisper a magic spell. That is the root primitive word of the word serpent, which the Bible calls Leviathan. It's to whisper a magic spell. That's the root word for the serpent in Hebrew. And this is the same word that we're going to find in Genesis 3 when Satan whispered to Adam and Eve and deceived them and caused them to rebel against God. This is a whispering, twisting spirit. We've already talked about in other videos how rebellion is witchcraft. This translate that the snake whispers a magic spell. Leviathan is a spirit that whispers magic, whispers lies, whispers divination. He speaks half truths. He miscommunicates. He brings deception and division onto and among people. He twists what is said to you to whisper his magic spells on people. This is the way that the serpent worked in the garden and this is the way that the spirit of Leviathan works. I told you Jezebel also whispers. She's the one that's always in the corners when you're in service. She's always up in there in the corner whispering into people's ears. If you have people in your ministry that are always whispering behind your back, you need to be careful because the serpent whispers spells. That's the primitive root word for the Hebrew word serpent. This is what the enemy does. Psalms 133 says that when believers are in unity, the anointing flows and Leviathan constantly twists things to put people out of unity so the anointing can't flow. How many of you, let's just get honest and real tonight, type one in the chat, how many of you know people that everything they say or everything you say, they twist what you say? You say one thing about somebody and they manipulate it and they twist it and they say, well, so-and-so said this about you. Then the person comes up to you and they say, did you say this about me? You say, I didn't even say that. What are you talking about? It was because Leviathan was working through that person to try to twist what you actually said. Leviathan works in marriages and he'll twist conversations when you're talking to your wife or your husband. He'll begin to twist things. You'll say, that's not even what I said. He manipulates, he twists. You gotta know that if you're talking to somebody and they start twisting what you're trying to say, that this is the spirit of Leviathan at work. He whispers magic spells onto people and he manipulates and he twists. Some of you say, I work with somebody like that. Every time I say something, they're always twisting what I'm trying to say. They're always twisting what I'm trying to do. That is Leviathan that likes to twist the words. He likes to twist the conversations. Now, why is he so keen on doing this? He's so keen on this because twisted words break relationships. Twisted words cause disunity in churches. And when there is disunity, according to Psalms, the anointing of God cannot flow where there is disunity. Leviathan, yes, and Jezebel work together to twist and to manipulate and to strategize on how to break down relationships. Okay, not only does he twist conversations, does he twist words? Leviathan is a professional at twisting. You guessed it, the scripture. We just hit a thousand. Praise the Lord. Let's share this. He's a, let me just share this right there on my page just to help us out there. Okay. He's a, he's a professional at twisting the scripture. Remember the devil who is a serpent, when he tempted Jesus, twisted the scripture to try to get Jesus to give into temptation twisted scripture to try to get Jesus to live recklessly. Now, Paul over and over, I don't have a lot of time to get in this because this is a whole message in itself. Paul over and over talks about people that are twisting scripture. This was the spirit of Leviathan at work in the book of Acts church. I'm going to speed through some of these. Second Timothy 4, 3, Paul said for a time is coming where men are not going to endure sound and wholesome teaching, but instead they will have itching ears and they will accumulate from themselves teachers that will suit their own passions and they will turn away from listening to truth and wander into myths. Romans 16, 17, he says, I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles that are contrary to the doctrine that you've been taught. Avoid these people for such people do not serve the Lord our Jesus Christ, but they serve their appetites and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. What is Paul saying? He's saying these are people, a Leviathan spirit that is twisting the scripture. 2 Peter 3.16, he says, as he does in all his letters, when he speaks in them of these matters, these are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and the unstable, so Paul is talking about people that are ignorant and unstable. These are Bible teachers. He says, they twist 
to their own destruction as they do the scripture. So Paul is saying this in 2 Timothy 3, 2 Peter 3, 16, that they twist the scripture to their own destruction. 1 Timothy 4, 1, he says, now the spirit expressly says that in the last days, these men will depart from the faith by the voting to themse- devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teaching of demons. This is Paul giving us a picture of Leviathan that is twisting. And some of you need to go watch it back because I'm, I'm giving you over 60 verses tonight. It's too many verses for you to write down. But this is Leviathan. Paul's talking about uh, twisting the scriptures. This is a deceitful spirit and the teaching of demons. Galatians 3.01. Here's what Paul says. Galatians 3.01. Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? Okay. Same thing. Oh, brother, don't be so spiritual. This is the apostle Paul saying, who's cast an evil spell on you for the meaning of Jesus Christ was made clear to you as if you had seen a picture of the death on the cross paul says the picture of the gospel is clear why did you let somebody twist the gospel and put an evil spell on you goes all the way back to the serpent second corinthians 11 4 he says you happily and this is my this is the craziest one he says you happily put up with what anyone tells you even if they preach a different jesus than the one that i preach or a different kind of spirit a demonic spirit of leviathan than the one that you received or a different kind of gospel than the one that i taught you this is twisting scripture Paul goes over and over. Do I need more evidence of how Leviathan is going to twist the word of God? Friend, if you go listen to an average Sunday morning sermon and you're going to tell me that Leviathan is not twisting the word of God, we have created a Jesus in our image. We've created an easy gospel, an easy Jesus. And this is a twisted gospel that Leviathan is preaching from behind the pulpit. Over and over, Paul is telling us that the spirit will manipulate the scripture. Friend, we're living in the greatest deception in the church the world has ever seen because we are preaching a different Jesus in our churches if we are preaching a Jesus that doesn't heal come on are you with me type one if this is good if we are preaching a Jesus that doesn't deliver if we are preaching a Jesus a Jesus that doesn't bring complete transformation friend we are preaching a twisted Leviathan gospel the most telling scripture of Leviathan I believe is in first Timothy 6 4 look at what Paul says he says anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words there we go Leviathan communication he stirs up arguments ending in jealousy division slander and evil suspicions this is what Paul is saying these people always cause trouble their minds are corrupt and they have turned their backs on the truth to them a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy this is Paul telling Timothy about these type of people that twist the scripture Leviathan is always causing dissension and controversy among the believers that's why he twists your words that's why everything you said gets taken out of um, context is because he's a twisting spirit how many you know people that every oh i fell off i'm going to expose some people i'm sorry because some of you this is you tonight every church they go to they cause drama every church they go to they cause discord everything was fine until they showed up to the church and they started whispering their spells on people they started causing drama and discord they come in they bad mouth the last church and i'm telling you within six months you'll be the last church you'll be the one that they're talking about I have people come to my church oh isaiah that last church i was at the pastor did this and they start bad mouthing and they've been through 10 different ministries in the last year and i'm going this is leviathan trying to come up in here and cause discord and cause division listen honey i don't know what happened to you at that last church but don't bring the drama the gossip the dissension the division from the last church into this church that is a leviathan spirit and god is wanting to break it off the body of christ it's it's not the churches it's the person and it's leviathan working in the person paul says it's going they're going to cause jealousy and we could go a whole message on every one of these they're going to cause division they're going to slander they're going to cause evil suspicions and he says they're going to cause trouble because their minds are corrupt and they've already turned their back on the truth and some of you are like you're on point one brother and i know a lot of leviathans okay 
I'm telling you this, I've given my life since the moment I got saved to exposing the twisted gospel in America. This has literally been my assignment, my calling. The Lord called me, if you don't know, 10 years ago, the Lord called me out of being an atheist and said, Isaiah, I want you to preach the pastors and the leaders. The Lord told me, will not preach my word. So I want to raise you up to preach my word to people. This is the same thing that happened to Amos in chapter seven when they told Amos to stop preaching. Amos replied to the people and said, I'm not a perfect professional prophet and I've never been trained to be one I'm just a shepherd and I take care of sycamore trees but the Lord Amos says the Lord called me away from the flock and told me go prophesy to my people in Israel in other words Amos was saying listen guys I was minding my own business I was trying to get a job as a deputy sheriff I was I was planning to get married I was planning to buy a house at 21 I had my entire life my mom's in the chat my sister's in the chat my wife they all know my story I was I had my whole life plan out and like Amos said I was minding my own business tending to the sycamore trees and God came to me and said Isaiah preach to my people friend this is why I got my veins popping out this is why I don't care what you say this is why I don't care what you think oh brother you're too loud you talk too fast you're too wild you didn't call me you didn't anoint me you didn't assign me God did and so I'm not worried what you have to think about me because God is the one that called me and anointed me and said Isaiah go preach to my people they're not listening Listening to my word, I'm going to raise you up. Come on, share the stream to preach to my people. Okay, Leviathan twists conversations. Have you ever found yourself, as I said, and no matter what you say, they twist the conversations. So why does Leviathan do this in relate in conversations? It's to break and cause misunderstandings in relationships. If you've ever had drama with anybody, this could be your wife, this could be a friend, this could be a pastor, this could be a coworker, and you have all this drama for months and months, you don't talk, you fight, you bicker, you argue, and then months go by, and you sit down because Leviathan hates being confronted just like Jezebel and you say let's talk about what our issue is why we have what what's going on every single time it's because of a misunderstanding who created the misunderstanding who twisted the conversation to create the misunderstanding it was Leviathan I had someone recently okay I'm not gonna call them out because they're probably in the chat they recently tried to call me out and say I said something in one of my live streams. Now, I didn't even know what they were talking about. I didn't even know who they were talking about, which is how I knew I didn't say it because I didn't even know what they were talking about. I didn't know. I literally didn't even know the person they said that I was talking bad about. And so I said, OK, if I did say that, would you please send me a clip of me saying that? And of course, they couldn't produce a clip because this is the spirit of Leviathan that works to manipulate and that works to change things and that works to accuse you of things that never happen now a, a telltale sign that Leviathan is in your midst is when you find yourself in a situation where someone is upset with you claiming you said this you said that you told them this you told them that and even though you tried to assure them that you never said that they'll say something like you did say that I heard you say that come on how many oh somebody says Isaiah you're preaching good tonight there's 1100 of you now how many of you have been in this conversation where you say I never said that and they said I heard you say that and now you're arguing with the person whether you said something or not well here's the thing you might not have said those exact words but they probably did hear those words because Leviathan was twisting what you said and whispering distorted lies in their heart and in their mind that is why you argue now your whole life is starting to make sense now this is why you argue with people and you I never said that they actually heard you say that because Leviathan has power to twist words remember the serpent in the Hebrew means to whisper a spell on somebody this is Leviathan at work he twists here's a big one conversations in marriages when you try to talk to your spouse and everything you or she says gets misinterpreted and you keep saying that's not even what I'm trying to say how many of you have been there come on somebody's laughing right now my wife's probably laughing because when we argue it's like I'm not I'm, that's not even what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to explain this, and that's that communication breakdown. Friend, do you know why marriages don't work out? You know why uh, companies don't work out? You know why relationships don't work out? Miscommunication. Leviathan, and I'm only on number one still, is a, a spirit that causes miscommunication to get you to break relationships. You need to stop. When you're in the middle of fighting with your husband, when you're in the middle of fighting with your wife, when you're in the middle of fighting with your boss, I want you to stop in the middle of the fight. I feel the Holy Ghost on this and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, 
Leviathan is lurking right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Leviathan is moving right now. Leviathan is at work right now, twisting our conversation. And I rebuke that lying spirit. I rebuke that lying serpent. Imagine if Adam would have manned up when Leviathan, when that serpent spirit came in and spoke to Eve, that demon spirit, that devil spoke to Eve. And Adam said, wait a minute. This is the serpent lurking, trying to whisper his spell on us. It's time to break it. I, I challenge you, the next time you argue with your husband or wife and there's miscommunication, in the middle of your argument, just stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's Leviathan lurking through the waters. That's Leviathan lurking through the depths. That's Leviathan trying to cause miscommunication and deception in the midst of us. Many marriages end in divorce because of miscommunication. We need to be careful because of how we speak because not only does he twist words now write this down leviathan is empowered by our words this is found where's that at job 3 8 says let those who are experts at cursing those who are ready to rouse leviathan curse that day job is saying those that are experts at cursing and do it often they rouse leviathan they open the door to leviathan they invite leviathan that's job 3 out he says when you curse you rouse up leviathan you stir up the waters of leviathan so be very careful the, as I lose my voice, the words that you speak because you might be rallying Leviathan. Now, this scripture that Job talks about in 3 is a time where Job was going through a tough time. Job got into depression. He got into discouragement. And Job begins to complain and murmur and curse his own life. And so you need to be careful. The things that you speak over yourself don't rouse Leviathan. Leviathan is roused by our cursing, by our negative words. Yes, that's in Job. Leviathan is roused when we speak cursing. He said, if you're an expert at cursing, which some of you are, you're literally an expert at cursing yourself because all day long you speak negative things over your family, over your marriage, and over your life. You're going to rouse up Leviathan. That's why when you get in conversations and you're murmuring and you're complaining, that's when Leviathan starts getting roused. He starts lurking. He starts waking up. So curses wake up Leviathan. Okay, number one, we're just, we're just finishing number one. Praise the Lord. 40 minutes. And number one is that Leviathan twists the truth. Write that down. Number two, Leviathan is a covenant breaker. Write that down. Number two is Leviathan is a covenant breaker. And I'm going to give you verses for every single attribute and characteristic of Leviathan. So don't stress. Don't panic. I'm going to give you a verse. That's found in Job 41.4. Says he will. This is God asking Job the question. He says, will he make a covenant with you will you take him as a servant forever in other words god is sarcastically telling job leviathan is not going to come in agreement with you he's not going to make a covenant with you why because leviathan is a covenant breaking spirit the spirit of leviathan causes us to break covenant the spirit this spirit does not keep covenant this spirit does not honor covenant this spirit does not consider or regard covenant as a sacred or a holy thing are we not seeing this in our generation is the spirit of leviathan not lurking in our generation we are living in the most uncommitted generation ever where divorce rates are at an all-time high remember marriage is a covenant between man and woman and leviathan is a covenant breaker that will get you to break covenants without thinking twice i believe leviathan is responsible for many divorces i believe one of the greatest causes or or movements of leviathan or effects or symptoms of leviathan is the divorce rates in the church in the waters in the move of god are skyrocketing guys this is I, i'm i'm this generation I can speak on this. We are living in the most uncommitted generation ever. Our generation teaches, if you want to quit, just throw in the towel. It's no big deal. Just quit. If you want to quit your job, just quit. We don't even do two weeks notices anymore. If you want to quit your wife, quit your marriage. If you're a pastor, you could just cheat on your wife. We'll do what we call restore you, which is really nothing. And then we'll raise you back up. You can remarry a new wife. You could be back on social media in a year and you could go preach and do everything you want. Leviathan is a covenant breaking spirit. Another day we'll do a video on covenant, but understand this is Leviathan. Now, the reason why it's so easy to break covenant is because pride causes you to 
have the ability to easily walk away from things. How could you leave him or her if you had something so good? I'm going to tell you why people leave great relationships, great marriages, great ministries, because pride will not apologize. Friend, listen, your marriage won't survive if you don't learn to apologize. You got to learn this. Pride will not apologize. Pride will not humble itself. Pride will not admit that it's wrong. Pride breaks covenant leviathan breaks covenant now we all know these people who are these people you're talking about isaiah people that cannot keep relationships people that have trouble keeping relationships yes i'm preaching to you tonight they have trouble keeping jobs they have trouble keeping friendships they have trouble maintaining anything functional some of you right now listening listen there's almost 1200 of you watching many of you have trouble being committed to anything but you didn't realize this was leviathan who's the covenant breaker who doesn't apologize who steps on people this is leviathan at work he breaks covenant remember one of god's attributes is faithfulness now faithfulness could be um a very hard term to understand but let me give you the basic definition of faithfulness it's consistency that's what faithfulness means one of the devil's attributes is to be uncommitted god's attribute is to be committed god understand is committed being uncommitted is demonic if you can't maintain a job if you can't maintain a marriage a relationship a family or a friendship it's demonic this is leviathan at work and anytime you ask him what happened oh they said this about me oh they did this to me oh this and you know what we're okay i'm getting ahead of myself but we're going to go into that later but leviathan is always playing the blame game second timothy 2 13 says if we are faithless he remains faithful for god cannot deny himself even when we are faithless meaning uncommitted to god god remains committed even when we are sinning god remains committed even when we should be disqualified Every one of us, including me, should have been disqualified a thousand times, but our God, come on, I'm shouting tonight, our God is committed. God is not a covenant breaker. God is a covenant keeper. 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Romans 3, 3, what if some were unfaithful? Does their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God Paul says listen church of Rome just because you're unfaithful doesn't mean God is unfaithful he says your unfaithfulness doesn't nullify the faithfulness of God he says even when you're not faithful our God is a faithful God scripture after scripture I could give you a hundred we'll talk about the faithfulness of God our God is a faithful God the entire theme of the Old Testament is the children of Israel cheating on God being unfaithful to God and God remaining faithful protecting them when they didn't deserve it healing them when they rejected him pursuing them when they ran from him delivering them when they neglect his presence over and over and over and over the faithfulness of God prevail can I get somebody in this chat tonight y'all need to wake up to testify to the faithfulness of God can I get somebody that says when i had no money god was faithful and paid the bill when somebody can somebody testify say i should be dead but it was the faithfulness of god that came through when everything fell apart it was the faithfulness of god that was still there right in the nick of time god showed up is our god not a faithful god come on where are y'all at tonight is our god not a stable god our god is a man of his word guys this is what i love about god especially this is the most relevant word we could ever preach right now in a generation in a time in a pandemic where everything is unstable the job's unstable the the economy is unstable you don't even know tomorrow if your house is going to drop a hundred thousand dollars in value you don't even know tomorrow what's going to happen we don't know what's going to happen by january what's going to happen next week we're in the middle of this crazy election we have no clue every minute something's changing and then god looks down the earth is his footstool and says i am a solid faithful rock i'm not a changing god there's no pandemic going on in heaven right now there's no covid 19 in the throne room that our god is stable that when everything else fails me come on i'm preaching to somebody when everything else is unfaithful when everybody else walks out our god remains a faithful judge a faithful god i'm grateful tonight to the faithfulness of God it's time to break this uncommitted demonic attitude there is no room for quitters there's no room I'm done being a quitter you're not going to quit oh I'm prophesying over somebody tonight 
You are not going to quit in Jesus' name. You have come too far to throw in the towel now. You cannot quit on your marriage just because it got hard. You cannot quit on your job just because it got tough. You cannot quit because there's some friction between you and your pastor. Work it out, fight it out, last it out, and pray it out, and stop quitting all the time. Don't let, I'm preaching tonight, don't let Leviathan win in your marriage. Don't let Leviathan win in your relationships. Don't let Leviathan win in your prayer life. This spirit is no joke, and you can't take this spirit lightly. Now, Job 41.5 says, can you make Leviathan a pet like a bird, or give it to your little girls to play with? Will merchants try to buy Leviathan and sell him in their shops will its hide be hurt by spears or by harpoons if you lay hands on leviathan you'll certainly remember the battle that follows you won't try that again what is god telling job god is saying job listen very closely turn me up he's saying he's saying job listen leviathan is not a joke He's not a game. He's not a pet that you bring home. This is in your Bible word for word. He says, you don't give it to your little girls to play with. This is not some pet demon. This is not something that you can bring in your house and it'll coexist with your marriage. This is a ferocious, powerful monster that wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Leviathan is not a pet. And some of you, come on, share this, have been treating Leviathan like it's a pet and inviting him to hang out in your house. And God says, Job, this is no pet. Don't take this lightly, Job. This is a beast lurking in the depths, wanting to destroy everything in its path. One of the greatest mistakes, now this is gonna go against what popular pastors preach, I don't care. One of the greatest mistakes we have made as a church is taking the enemy lightly. One of the greatest mistakes we've made in the church is acting like the devil doesn't exist, acting like he's no big deal. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says to ignore the devil. It says resist him. It doesn't say ignore him. Resist is an active verb. The Bible warns over and over and over, and we brush it off as if it's no big deal. You want to know why all these pastors are suddenly getting exposed? Because they took the devil as no big deal. Because they invited Leviathan to come play. They invited adultery to come play. They invited alcohol to come play. They invited sexual immorality to come play. And that thing bit them like Leviathan will bite you. I'm telling you right now, stop acting like demons are no big deal. As we say, it's no big deal. Meanwhile, we live captive and a slave to these spirits but talk as if they're no big deal these spirits draw us into adultery they draw us into deception they draw us into addiction stop treating these demons like they're your family dog stop acting like they're innocent and harmless stop acting like there's no danger and they're no big deal the only person you're helping with that attitude is the devil listen to me all of you pastors and leaders that secretly watch me that tried to comment on that last video I posted of deliverance is happening saying oh we need we don't really need this in the church we need to just preach the gospel we don't need to preach deliverance you're helping the devil by not exposing him you're helping conceal him stop helping the devil by acting like he doesn't exist that's what he wants you to think the devil wants you to think he's not real he doesn't exist this is not a game. The devil's not a pet. Stop playing with him, okay? Stop playing with him. Okay, let's go into characteristic number three. Number two was Leviathan's a covenant breaker. Number three is Leviathan. Oh, I got so much here tonight. We got to go quick, guys. I got way too much. Is Leviathan causes you to be prayerless. Write that down. Leviathan causes you to be prayerless. Where's that? That's in Job 41.3. The Bible says, will he make many supplications or will he make many prayers to you, Job? Will he speak softly to you? Leviathan is a prayerless spirit. He comes to choke out your prayer life. He does not like prayer. There's only one thing the enemy is afraid of. There's one thing the enemy hates. There's one thing Leviathan wants to choke out of you. That is your passion, your fire, and your desire to pray and some of you know this because you try and go and pray for 30 minutes and everyone and their mom starts calling you and texting you that is leviathan that does not pray he does not make supplications and he doesn't want you to pray the enemy knows the power of a praying church and he releases this spirit to make sure that there's no prayers there's no supplications he wants to cause you to stop crying out to god here's how i know this 
because prideful people don't pray write that down prideful people don't pray friend prayerlessness is the biggest sign of pride that there ever was pride pride says i don't need help so why should i pray pride keeps you from getting on your knees a prideful person does not go to the altar a prideful person does not get on their face come on share this a prideful person does not get up before god and beg and cry and plead when you don't pray now let me tell you what you're telling god when you don't have a prayer life for some of you watching right now when you don't pray you are inadvertently telling god I don't need you in my life. I don't need divine intervention. I don't need your help. That is Leviathan working in you. Now, if you can look on the last month of your life and you barely prayed at all, you're proud. You might not know you're proud, but you're proud and Leviathan has already swam into the waters of the move of God that God's trying to do in your life. Leviathan has work. So many people I talk to that call on our show, if you're in our Monday night show, you know what I'm saying? Or I talk to you while traveling, tell me, the, all the issues they have. Well, Isaiah, I have this issue in my marriage. I have this issue with my kids. I have this issue at my job. I have this issue at work. I have this issue with my ministry. They just have a thousand issues bombarded by the cares of life. And then I always ask them this, and you guys have heard me ask them, how is your prayer life? That's what I always ask them. How is your prayer life? And they always say they don't have one. Friend, I'm telling you, how can you be in a relationship with someone that you never talk to? Communication is the most important part of a relationship, yet we paint this picture that we have this incredible relationship with Jesus, this incredible relationship with God. Meanwhile, we talk to him five minutes a day or one time on Sunday, that's not a relationship, that is a religion, and this is delusional. Oftentimes, we're mad at God for not answering prayers that we're not even praying. Every one of us have friends and family in the chat right now that are unsaved, but then think about how much time did you spend praying for them? Little to none. Many of you listening right now did not pray one time this week for your unsaved friends, your unsaved family, and you're mad at God that he hasn't saved them. Friend, I'm telling you, you are living under Leviathan and you are delusional. Leviathan is a prayerless spirit and you are in dangerous, lurking waters when you stop praying and you open up the door to Leviathan. It's no wonder why God told the children of Israel, a professional prostitute can learn a thing or two from you. I'm telling you, friend, we need to get back to prayer. We need to stop cheating on God with this spirit and begin to pray. Mark 11, 24, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you've received it and it'll be yours. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but instead pray about everything. Let your requests be known to God. Anxiety is a result of a prayerless life. Anxi friend, you know what anxiety is? Anxiety is an alarm that reminds you that you haven't been praying. Anytime I get anxious, anytime I get anxiety, it's because I've been lacking prayer. And I, you know what happens when I get anxiety? I go, whoop, looks like I need to pray. Stop hitting the snooze button on your anxiety. And when you get anxiety, call out to God and begin to pray. Anytime I get this, I begin to pray. Leviathan is trying to choke the prayer life out of you. Prayer is oxygen to your oxygen to your spirit. And this snake has wrapped itself around you and it squeezes the oxygen, it squeezes the life, and it squeezes the prayer out of your spirit. Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray that you might not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayer gives you power to overcome temptation. And Leviathan is a prayerless spirit. Now, God also tells Job, Leviathan will not speak softly. So that also shows me Leviathan, and this is under the same category, is filled with harsh words. God says, Job, Leviathan is not a soft spirit. He has a harsh edge to him. People that have the spirit of Leviathan working in their life are harsh, okay? They're mean. How many, how many ways do you want me to say this? They're rude. They're negative. They always speak death. They don't know how to be nice or speak softly. Proverbs 15.1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. You want to know why you're always angry? Because you're hard on everybody. You're harsh on everybody. You're like an evil dictator. And that is the spirit of Leviathan trying to come in and speak out of you. Leviathan speaks harsh words. Now, I want to show you this. In Ephesians 4.29, the Bible says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only good things that build people up as to fit the occasion, that it may give grace to those that hear. So here's what he's saying. If you don't have something nice to say, what did your mom used to tell you? My mom's in the chat. 
don't say anything at all. If something you're saying is not positive, don't say it. He goes, you're always negative and rude. Keep your mouth shut. Leviathan speaks harsh words. Remember, this is a communicative spirit. And this is the way Leviathan communicates. I want to show you another one. Proverbs 12, 18. This is what it says. There is one whose harsh words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So here's what he's saying. Harsh words injure people harsh words hurt people when you're hard on people it's like getting a sword and thrusting it into their spirit and you have to understand that some of you are still dealing with word curses and hurt from words spoken over you 30 years ago you could sit here and 30 years ago go 30 years ago somebody called me fat 30 years ago somebody called me a loser 30 years ago somebody said i was worthless 30 years ago why because i'm telling you proverbs 12 18 harsh words are like sword thrusts they damage they cut but the bible says that the power of life and death is found in the tongue it's with the tongue the bible says that we bless or we curse so be careful that you're not inadvertently oh i'm preaching to somebody tonight cursing people with your harsh words leviathan's a harsh spirit okay we're an hour and 15 minutes in we're on number four characteristic number four leviathan write this down this is the interesting one. Leviathan has multiple heads. Yes, I said that right. Leviathan has multiple heads. Where is that? That's in Psalm 74, 13. This is what Psalm 74, 13 says. You divided the sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea serpent in the waters. You broke the heads of Leviathan into pieces. Notice David said, you broke the heads of Leviathan. Heads representing personalities, characteristics, attributes. Write this down. Leviathan does not have one head, but he has many heads, many functions, multiple personalities. Let me tell you, I believe the Bible does talk about the different heads of Leviathan. I'm going to show you where. Write this down. Let me tell you what I believe the heads of Leviathan are. I'm going to show you this. The seven heads of Leviathan, I believe, are found in Proverbs 6, 16. Write that down. The seven heads of Leviathan are in Proverbs 6, 16. It says this. There are six things the Lord hates. No. This is Proverbs. It says no. There are seven things that are an abomination to him. So these are seven, six things the Lord hates. No, no, no. Seven that are an abomination. Strong words. So if it says these are an abomination to God, it uses strong language like that. Write it down. Highlight it. Underline it. Mark it. Note it. Bookmark it. Check it. Circle it. Heart it. Whatever you have to do. If something is an abomination to God, you want to make sure you're not doing that. So these are the seven heads of Leviathan. Now I'm going to go over very, very quick for the sake of time because we're still on barely on characteristic, uh, you know, number four. But these are the seven heads, and they're found in Proverbs. If you're just jumping on the seven heads of Leviathan, Proverbs 6, 16. The first one is haughty eyes. Now notice a lot of these have to do with pride because these are the heads of Leviathan. Haughty eyes. This means to be arrogant. It means to be proud. Now haughty are someone that always looks down on others. They're always better than everybody else. Now we all know people like this. These are a lot of pastors and celebrity preachers are haughty. Psalms 18 says God brings down those that have haughty eyes. Isaiah 2 says God brings the haughty low and exalts the humble. He's Ezekiel 16 says, God will remove those that are haughty. One of the things we're seeing right now with these pastors being exposed is that God is removing the haughty. God is removing the arrogant. Woe, the mighty have fallen. How many times have we seen pride take people out? So understand that this was the main issue with the Pharisees. Why was, why is Jesus hanging out with people like that? Why is Jesus around sinners? Religion makes you haughty. It makes you feel like you're better than everybody. It makes you feel like you're above everybody. It will make you forget where you came from. I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to have haughty eyes. I don't ever want to be arrogant. I don't ever, ever want to look down on people. I don't ever want to look at homeless people and less fortunate people and hurting people and broken people and saying, oh, I'm above you or I'm better than you. Friend, listen, I'm no different than any one of you in the chat except the fact that I said yes to God January 12th of 2011. I'm telling you, it's time to break the haughty eyes in Jesus' name. I'm not talking about hot eyes. Some of you are like, oh, blue eyes. You know, <laughs> I'm not talking about hot eyes. I'm talking about haughty eyes, okay? Number two, there's a good laugh. The spoonful of sugar, how's it messing go down? The second head is a lying tongue. Pride often times causes people to lie. 
prideful people lie. These are some of you that are so good at lying in the chat tonight. You lie so frequently, you actually start believing some of your lies. You don't even know what truth is anymore. Psalms 12 says lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. I'm telling you, we need to cut the head off of this lying tongue and say, Lord, let it hurt when I lie about people. Let me feel the pain of conviction. I'm tired of having a lying tongue. Lying usually takes place and this is good, in order for you to take the easy route. That's why people lie, is because they want to take the easy route. Telling the truth is usually not the easy road or the easy route to take. But remember, the easy route is the broad route, and God is going to expose every lie one day. Colossians 3, 9 says, do not lie to one another, seeing that you've put to put away the old or put off the old self with its practices and you put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of the creator so here's what he, here's what he's saying paul's saying that's not you anymore stop lying you're not supposed to be a liar you used to be a liar but it's time to stop lying some of you need to pray that god would remove that lying tongue out of your mouth okay number three the third head is hands that kill the innocent. This is what we're seeing with abortion. Friends, abortion is one of Leviathan's heads. Abortion gives Leviathan an open door into the country. God told Cain, your brother's blood cries out from the ground. Innocent blood cries from the ground. Leviathan, one of his heads, or his, he kills the innocent. Number four is a heart that plots evil. Someone who strategizes on how to ruin other people. Someone who sits down trying to figure out how to get revenge on people. It's this mentality mentality of I'll show him he hurt me he he talked bad about me I'll show him their mentality is one of Leviathan's heads number five this is all found in Proverbs feet that race to do wrong God has called us to run from wrong not run towards wrong we need to flee from the lust the Bible says and we need to ask God that God would give us feet that run from sin not towards it the sixth head is a false witness or one who pours out lies here we see again God hates lying God hates slandering Number seven, the seventh head of Leviathan is a person that sows discord among the brethren. This is a major one and a major function of Leviathan. And you need to be very careful when you start gossiping, when you start slandering, when you start talking bad about people, and when you start causing division in family and relationships in a church, because everything was fine until you got there and you started causing discord and division. Division in the body, division in believers. And if you're the one causing it, is an abomination to the Lord. And this is where Leviathan and Jezebel work together in churches to cause discord. Jesus said a kingdom divided can't stand. This is one of the main ways the enemy brings down God's people is by setting them against each other. Seven was someone who sows discord among the brethren. Those are the seven heads of Leviathan. Okay. The fourth characteristic we already did was the seven heads of Leviathan. Number five, excuse me, number five is Leviathan has a stiff neck and a hard heart. Write this down. Number five is Leviathan. I'll give you all of them after, guys. Don't stress. Leviathan has a stiff neck, number five, and a hard heart. This is what the Bible says. Job 41, 22. Strength dwells in Leviathan's neck. Now, stiff neck is not an abnormal principle in the Bible. God would describe stubborn people as stiff neck people. Remember, Samuel said stubbornness is the sin of idolatry. So if you're stubborn, it's no different than worshiping an idol. You're in the same category. Acts 751, Stephen is defending himself to the religious people. And this is what he tells the religious people. He says, you stiff necked people, you're uncircumcised in your heart and your ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers do, you do too. This is a major theme throughout scripture, being stiff-necked, not willing to yield to the Spirit, not willing to adapt to the Holy Spirit. When you do altar calls, people that sit back, they say, I don't need this. That is a stiff neck spirit. Remember, Leviathan's strength is found in his stiff neck, the Bible says. Exodus 32, God said to Moses, I've seen these people and they are stiff-necked people. This is representing the children of Israel being rebellious and being stiff-necked and not adapting to the move of God. They're stubborn. They're always fighting me. They're always going against what I'm telling them. I say go one way, they go another way. So Leviathan has a stiff neck and a hard heart. This is found in Job 41, 24. The Bible says Leviathan's heart is as hard as stone, even as hard as the lower part of a millstone. This is speaking of, and this is very powerful for some of you in the chat, God's gonna heal you tonight. 
showing no emotion. Leviathan is a spirit that shows no emotion. He causes you not to feel emotion anymore. And I get very, I get very, a little bit emotional when I talk about this because this was me. I was so hard hearted before I got saved. I think it was something like 10 years I didn't cry and I was hard hearted. I felt no emotion. Some of you right now watching, you feel no emotion. You don't cry. You don't know how to express your emotions. You're shut down. You feel as if your heart has been hardened by miscommunication, by bad relationships, by breakups, by divorce. And God says tonight, I'm going to soften the hard heart. I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26 became my verse when I got saved. Ezekiel 36, 26. If you have a heart heart you need to memorize this and God says I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I'm going to put inside of you I will remove your heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh I prophesy over somebody tonight that has been dealing with Leviathan that God is going to give you your emotions back that God is going to restore your heart that God wants to heal your pain and your hurt someone tonight is going to get a heart of flesh Leviathan wants to harden your heart proud people is this good type one of this is good proud people are hard-hearted proud people are rough around the edges proud people speak harsh words and say harsh things okay number six a characteristic of leviathan we're going quick here guys we're an hour and 20 in here number six leviathan blocks the holy spirit from moving write that down number six leviathan blocks the holy spirit from moving now Job 41 15 this is where we're gonna find this his rows of scales are his pride shut up tightly like a seal one is so near to another that no air this is what the Bible says can get between his scales they're joined together they stick together and they can't be parted so here we're gonna see his scales are his pride shut up tightly protecting him the scales protect him and no air can get between them so people with leviathan I, I, I are you getting it tonight are very very protective their scales or their pride causes them to be protective i should use a better term here y'all are going to get this in a second they're defensive anytime you try to tell somebody they're defensive they shut down you can't approach them have you ever tried to deal with the leviathan spirit have you ever tried to deal with someone that has pride and you sit them down and you say hey i want to talk to you about something and they go i never said that i never did that i don't need deliverance i don't need your help i don't need i i know what i'm doing i know how to preach i know what i'm saying i know how to run my business this is the scales of leviathan that are protective and you can never speak correction listen if someone is not teachable correctable it is pride and these are the scales the bible says his rows of scales are his pride these are his protective covering people who have the spirit of leviathan refuse to be corrected now i know the behind the scenes of a lot of ministers that have fallen because i'm in the circles and i've had pastors tell me that they sat down with these ministers that were drinking partying watching horror movies sleeping around i had one particular i won't say his name but they spent 40 hours with this guy who was leading one of the biggest revivals at the time in America. 40 hours they tried to talk to him about his sin and his compromise and he was protective. He said, I don't want you to tell me people are coming to hear me preach. I don't need to take instruction from anybody. These are the scales of Leviathan that protect them, constantly defending. An arrogant person refuses to be corrected. You try to tell them they're wrong and they're gonna defend their sin, defend their addiction, defend their position. This is Leviathan at work, okay? But here's what I want to show you. Verse 16 says that the scales are so near. Now hear this in the spirit. The scales are so near that no air can get between the scales. Now air represents the breath of the spirit. Air represents the move of the spirit. Remember in John 20, 22, the Bible says Jesus breathed on the disciples, breathed air, and they received the Holy Spirit. Genesis 2, 7 said, then the Lord God formed the man of the dust and he breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils and the man became a living person. Other places that talk about the air of God, Job 27, Job 32, Job 34, Psalms 104, Isaiah 42, Ezekiel 37, Acts 17. These are all verses that talk about the breath of God or the air of God bringing life. The scales of pride that Leviathan has block 
the Spirit of God, block the Holy Spirit, block the wind of God in your life. These scales of pride block the move of God. Some people feel like they've lost the life of God. They've lost the passion that they once had. They feel like it's impossible to get the fire back, the passion back. This is the pride of Leviathan trying to prevent the air of God or the move of the Holy Spirit from penetrating and getting in your life. Pride will actually block God from moving. Remember, what does the Bible say about pride? And at this point, I've already given you over 50 verses, but what does the Bible say about pride? It says God opposes or resists the proud. Pride will no doubt stop the move of God in your life. Now, let me tell you the best way, write this down, the best way to stop God from moving, the best way to not receive the Holy Spirit, the best way for the breath of God to not breathe on you is pride. If you want to stop God from moving, if you want the anointing to stop flowing out of your ministry, flowing out of your marriage, flowing out of your family, flowing out of your life, have some pride and the Holy Spirit will resist you. What does that mean? It means that you'll try to chase after God and God will run from you because you're arrogant and because you're proud. You need to understand this. Okay. Number seven, and we're going to go through this quick and we're going to write, and I'm going to have you guys write this down. And then I'm going to pray over you guys to break the spirit of Leviathan. Number seven, fittingly enough, is how to defeat Leviathan. You knew I wasn't going to talk to you that long without telling you how to defeat him. Number seven is how do we defeat Leviathan? Now in Isaiah 27, one, oh, I love this. It says in that day, the Lord with his severe sword, which is great and strong, will punish Leviathan, the fling serpent. Leviathan, that twisted serpent, and he will slay that reptile that is in the sea. In the sea. Isaiah 27, one says, and the Lord will punish Leviathan with his severe sword. So I want you to notice the sword is not a peaceful sword or a nice sword, it's a severe sword. I'm gonna give you five strategies to defeating the spirit of Leviathan. Number one is the sword of the Lord, the severe sword of God, the sword of the spirit. Guys, we have tamed the sword. What is the sword? The sword is the word of God. That's what Ephesians 6 talks about. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We have dulled the sword in America. We have tamed the sword in America. The sword is no longer severe. But notice when Leviathan gets defeated, the Bible says the sword is severe. It's a severe sword. It cuts. And our word, our preaching, when's the last time you went into a Sunday morning service and the word of God cut you open? The word of God was severe. You felt the fear of God as the pastor was preaching. You are shaking and trembling in the fear of God. We don't preach the severe word of the Lord. That's why there's 1,100 of you live right now is because you're saying, Isaiah, I finally found you. Somebody's preaching the severe word of God. Guys, we don't dance around sin. We don't preach this kumbaya, cuddle me word. The sword is severe and it's time to start preaching the severe word of God. I'm going to be bringing Bill Wees on the podcast soon and we're going to be talking about the fear of God and the severity of God. Understand that the sword of the spirit is our offensive weapon and we wield it by our speech. We speak out God's word against these demonic spirits. I believe God is restoring the severity of his word back to the church. I pray that God would raise up severe preachers. My opinion, the more severe the preaching, the better. I don't need someone to tell me jokes from behind the pulpit. I don't need chicken soup for the soul. I need the word of God to pierce. Let me say that again. I don't need chicken soup for my soul. I need the word of God to pierce and to cut. I need someone to smash my compromise, smash my addictions. I need someone to tell me what what is God saying right now? We need the severity of God's word. I pray that God would raise up severe preachers. I pray Leonard Ravenhills would raise up. Jonathan Edwards's would raise up. Uh, David Wilkerson's would raise up. Let the severe word be preached. I love when people come to me and say, man, while you're preaching, I felt the severity. I felt the fear of the Lord. We need the severity and the power of God. We don't need the chicken soup for the soul or the Campbell chicken soup for the Christian soul or whatever it is. We need the severity of God's word. We need breakthrough. We need someone to cut us open and tell us the word of God like it is. The word of God is a surgical weapon, a surgical tool that cuts. Okay, you are y'all hearing me tonight? Okay, 
Paul Washer, praise the Lord. Number one is the severity of the word or the word of God. That's how we fight Leviathan. Number two, humility. Write this down. The second way to defeat, defeat the spirit of Leviathan is humility. My favorite saying on humility is C.S. Lewis, who says, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. We are living in a world that is all about self all about gratifying me giving me pleasure giving me joy getting likes we have a like culture like my video like my picture like my selfie like my food like 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 me 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 a self-absorbed we're the only generation ever that makes a page all about us where people can like it i mean think about this we make a facebook page all about us and then we beg people to like us and to like our page honestly i can give a rip about who likes me as long as at the end of the day i'm obedient to the word of god paul says if i wanted religious people to like me i would never be a slave of christ i would never be a believer understand that we need to break out of self and live our lives in humility our generation is all about self well guess what jesus is about crucifying yourself Jesus, you know who the issue is? Not your neighbor, not your dog, not your cat, not your grandma, not your aunt. You're your problem. You are the issue. You're arrogant and you're proud and it's time to die to self. The greatest lesson on humility is in John 13. Jesus knew, the Bible says, that the Father had given him authority over everything. He had come from God and would return to God. And the Bible says, so he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, poured water into a basin, then began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around them. This is God in the flesh saying, let me show you how to be great. Let me show you how to rule and reign. Let me show you how to have power in the spirit and to walk in holiness. And then he starts washing his disciples' feet. The Bible says the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve. We have lost this, my friend, in the church. We have these celebrity pastors that are no longer servants, that want everybody to worship them. When the man of God walks in the room, everybody stand up. That 10 thumbs down, 100 thumbs down, I am so sick of this self-worshiping spirit of these so-called prophets selling prophetic words, people kissing their feet, worshiping the ground that they walk in. Is it okay to follow men of God? Yes. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. But it is not okay when we begin to want people to worship us. Humility breaks the back of that arrogant and that proud spirit. And there is too much arrogance. There's too much entitlement happening right now. We need humility. We need people to choose the low road. We need people that when you when they slander you you go low when they speak bad about you you go low when they correct you you go low we need some people that are willing to go low not try to see how famous or how popular they could be we need humility back in our generation i think one of the reasons god has kept me humble is spiritual covering spiritual fathering spiritual people around me speaking into me correcting me nino who's listening now who has constantly been in my life a voice of reason saying don't say this don't go here you shouldn't do this correcting me guys constantly correcting me keeping me humble another thing is i respond to all my own altar calls if you've ever been to my meetings i preach and then i respond to the altar call because i'm not above reproach i'm not preaching at you i'm preaching with you i need this tonight i need god to break leviathan i'm not above it guys i get on my face the last place i preached i was in my hotel on my face before god saying god humble me strike down me strike down any arrogance or any pride in my heart i don't want to allow leviathan that snake that fling serpent to try to wrap himself around me i got to stay humble that's why praise god for the thousands of messages of people getting healed and delivered and all that you know what i do i throw the crowns at the feet of jesus i say all glory to god i'm not talking about false humility you could say thank you when someone says good song I'm saying, Lord, I don't want to allow that spirit of Leviathan to try to come in my life to make me think I'm above reproach. Another thing that has kept me humble is I don't, I don't want to be a preacher. I have never wanted to be a preacher. I was an atheist trying to become a police officer and God audibly came to me and said, go preach to my people. I don't, I didn't choose this life. This life chose me and I would be more than happy if God said, Isaiah, I don't want you to ever preach again. And I could go get a normal job. But the reality is God has called me and anointed me to blow the trumpet and to speak his word. And my prayer has always been, Lord, keep me humble. I want to remain humble. Now, humility, 
is what keeps you after service meeting people and praying with people. And listen, if you've been to my meeting, the last meeting I was at, we had a, almost a four hour service. And if you were there, I prayed after service. I stayed for another hour and prayed for a line of people. Am I tooting my horn? No, I'm saying when I go to churches, I go to serve, not be served. I started preaching and I would pray till two, three in the morning for people. And the pastor would say, oh, just come to the green room like all the other guest speakers. I didn't come to get served. I came to serve people. The reason why I'm on Monday night for hours, every Monday night talking to you guys is because I want to serve you. I want to bless you. I want to pour out. I want to wash your feet. I want to help you. I want to pour into you. I'm not rushing you. I'm not on the call saying, hurry up and get to the next caller. I have 50 callers when I ended the last stream. I'm there listening, praying. I cry with you. I believe for you. I pray for you. I'm telling you, this is humility. The moment we start looking down haughty on people, like, oh, I'm better than you. I'm just child of I have 100,000. And you start getting all this dumb, toxic religious 10 thumbs down that's happened right now to all the megastar preachers i know i'm ranting here but it's okay it's my stream that's when leviathan creeps in number two is humility number three that's all i'm going to say about that okay you just gave me a five minute rant there you could tell how tired i am of these arrogant proud preachers i can't stand them number three is repentance okay let me say it again i can't stand them and god can't stand them number three is repentance number three this needs to be a daily thing and a daily attitude. John 14, 30, Jesus said, the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. In other words, the devil and me have nothing in common. Jesus said, I'm giving no room, no space, no place for the devil in my heart, in my mind. None of it could happen in my life. We need to live in an attitude of repentance if we're going to overcome Leviathan. We need to live in a lifestyle, write this down, of quick repentance, okay? Don't spend weeks and weeks and then go, oh, I repent for what I did, you know, the last week I've been watching porn every day. I just repent. No, no, no. Quick repentance. Saying, Lord, change the way that I think I'm wrong in this area. Pride fights against repentance because proud people never think they're wrong. That's why proud people don't repent. Why do I need to repent? I'm always right. Repentance is the key to breaking Leviathan, Acts 3.19. The Bible says, now repent of your sin and turn to God so that your sins might be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from God's presence. Repentance activates the move of God in your life. He says, if you repent, the presence of God will come refresh you. It'll restore you. It'll renew you. Repentance is vital to overcoming Leviathan. You need to repent. It will bring the refreshing of God. If you're tired, if you're weary, if you, if you feel like God hasn't refreshed you, you need to repent. Okay, number four is prayer. We already talked about this. You need to have an open line, a constant prayer with God every day saying, Lord, I can't go on a day without you. I can't survive today without you. Constantly depending and leaning on God will keep you humble and will keep Leviathan away the bible says blessed are the beggars it doesn't mean someone who's begging all the time a beggar is someone who's dependent on someone else to survive if a beggar need, doesn't get a handout they die god is saying i want you to be the beggar i'm going to give you the handout and you need to live your life where if you don't get what i have for you you'll die that's what god means by being a beggar okay number five last one then we're going to pray whoo hour and 40 minutes and we're going to break the spirit of leviathan number five is forgiveness this is the last weapon, there's many others, but the last one I'm gonna give you to defeating Leviathan, and this is a major pride killer. Why forgiveness? Because proud people never ask for forgiveness. That's why you went a week long, you didn't talk to your wife or your husband, because you're too arrogant and proud, and Leviathan refuses to apologize, refuses to ask for forgiveness, and refuses to forgive those that have wounded him. Because Leviathan is a spirit that causes hurt, misunderstandings divisions speaks lies about people unforgiveness easily takes root when leviathan is working walking in an attitude of forgiveness will break the power of leviathan you need to be quick to forgive i could give you 20 verses on forgiveness but you need to know you need to be quick to forgive in jesus name this is how you'll break that serpent and that power of leviathan okay here's what i want to do i want to pray and i want to break the spirit of leviathan i'm going to lead you through some prayers and this is not going to be a written down prayer this is not going to be repeat after me like we do sometimes this is going to be you renouncing dealing with your unforgiveness now dealing with whatever it is your pride and arrogance now right now before we pray humble yourself and then you're literally going to tell leviathan i don't want anything to do with you i don't want you in my life 
I don't want you in my marriage. I don't want you in my ministry. I don't want you in my mind. I don't want you in my heart. I have no room, no space. The move of God, the air of God, all of the stuff I preached on tonight is, no, and I'm going to post all the stuff, uh, the seven after, don't worry, and the five ways to defeat him, don't worry. But right now, I want you to break the power of Leviathan. Right now, I want you just to say, I renounce Leviathan. You need to tell the spirit, I don't want you here. You need to tell Leviathan, say, Leviathan, I am not your home. I renounce you. I don't want you anymore. I don't want the power of Leviathan in your own words. I'm not leading you in prayer. Some of you are like, uh, say it so I can repeat it. No, we're not doing that. I want you to renounce Leviathan. I want you to say, Leviathan, you have no power. You have no strength. I humble myself before God. However that is for you, do your forgiveness. We've done this a bunch of times. Do what you need to do. And then we're going to command that spirit to leave you. We're going to command that spirit to get out of the move of God. We're going to command that spirit to leave your life, leave your marriage, leave your family, leave your kids, leave your house. That spirit has no legal right. That spirit has no legal power. It's time to break the power of Leviathan once and for all. So right now, just begin to tell it. Leviathan, you have no room. I don't want you. I renounce you. I break you. That's all you're going to be saying. I break you. You have no legal right. You have no legal authority. You, yeah, you can intercede for your spouse. You're coming off my marriage. You're coming off my mind. Come on, just begin to pray it. You're coming off my ministry. Unwrap yourself from my mind, you, you foul serpent. I come against you now. And some people right now are feeling already deliverance. Come on, right now, tell him he has to go. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray this over you. He has to go now. Leviathan, you have no power. I'm gonna pray over you right now. Come on, just receive. Don't try to pray over me, just receive. Right now in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you that you're not bound to time, place, or space. But God, you're moving right now. Your power is moving. Your anointing is moving. Your fire is moving. And right now, in Jesus' name, I bind up the spirit of Leviathan. I bind up the spirit of Python. I bind up the spirit of snake now, in Jesus' name. Leviathan, we bind you. Come on, this is mass deliverance. We bind you, Leviathan. You have no legal right. You have no power. You covenant-breaking spirit. We bind you in Jesus' name. We command you to leave these people. We command you to get off of them. You have no place here. We don't want you here. We break your legal right. And we command that Leviathan spirit to unwrap itself now in Jesus' name. To be broken now in Jesus' name. To release you now. Leviathan, we say, come off of our marriage right now. Leviathan, come off of our kids right now. Come on, Leviathan, come off. You prayed off your kids now. Come off of our kids now. Come off of our ministries now. Come off of our finances now. Leviathan, you lying spirit, we break you now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. We know you're there and we command you to leave. You have no legal grounds. You are an illegal, trespassing spirit. And we say, come out in Jesus' name. We bind you. I bind every Leviathan spirit in Jesus' name. I bind the serpent, I bind the dragon, I bind the snake. Not in Isaiah's name, I have no power in my name. In Jesus' name, in the name that is above every name, we crush the head of the serpent. The Bible says the serpent will bruise his heel, but he will crush his head. And I say, Leviathan, your head has been crushed in Jesus' name. And I speak now, Lisa, deliverance over you. Chris, I speak deliverance over you. Jordan, I speak deliverance over you now. Leviathan, let him go. In Jesus' name, we speak breakthrough right now. We speak breakthrough right now. Love, faith, we speak over you now. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Leviathan, you have to go. You're done. Enough is enough. This is our final stand. The serpent of the sea, the fleeing serpent, God says, I crush him with my severe sword. God is crushing the head of Leviathan. God is crushing the power of this fleeing, twisted serpent. Right now in Jesus' name. Danae, we break it now. Lynn, Rose, Hannah. Right now, we break it. Lorraine, Miguel, Kathy, Chris, Lindia, Sylvia, Tehran, Danae. Now, we break it in Jesus' name. Come out now. Come out now in Jesus' name. Belinda, right now. We command it to leave. Mia, Teresa, Priscilla, Elizabeth, Brenda, Sandra, Monique, Caroline, right now. Michelle, we break it now in Jesus' name. Leviathan, you must go. You must go now in Jesus' name. We command your power to be broken. Some of you say, well, you're just praying the same thing over and over again. We're hammering right now in the spirit. 
We are unrelenting. We're putting pressure on the spirit now. And we break it off of you, Frederica, Pedro, Anita, Shelly, Carol, Chris, Zenny, Michelle, Adriana, Jeanette. We break it now. Leviathan, some of you right now off your husband. I see you. We, we command that proud spirit to come off your husband. We command that spirit of pride to come off your husband right now. Off your husband now in Jesus' name. Just begin to call that spirit off your husband. I don't care if he's there. I don't care if he's not in the room. He might be at work. Leviathan now, come off in Jesus' name. Come off of our marriages now. Come off of our, our husbands, our wives. You foul spirit, the Lord himself rebukes you. Uncoil yourself now, you twisted serpent. The Lord rebukes you now. We break you in Jesus' name. Come on, Hannah, Victoria, Rachel, I see you, Wendy. It's broken now. Off now. Pride. Now pride works with Leviathan. Obviously, the spirit of pride, confusion, arrogance. We command that haughty spirit, spirit of arrogance, spirit of pride, spirit of confusion. We bind you all together now, and we cast you in the abyss. We cast you in the pit, and we say never return in Jesus' name. Your power is broken. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Go. People right now are saying they're getting deliverance. They feel it coming out of them. Go in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. All you pastors in the chat now, Leviathan is being broken off you now. Command that spirit to come off your church. Command that spirit to come off your ministry. It has no place in your ministry. Come out, Leviathan. You have no place in our ministries. We break you now in Jesus' name. Never come back. Never come back. Michael says he's getting choked. Michael, right now, we command that spirit to come off you. I command that Leviathan spirit to come off of Michael right now in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Go. You have no legal right to be there. You have no place. You have no place. You have no place, Leviathan. We know you're there. You've been exposed. Yes, people are getting delivered right now. Go in Jesus' name. Leave in Jesus' name. Get out now in Jesus' name. We're not repeating words, guys. We're putting spiritual pressure. We're breaking the spirit right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Father, we just ask you now, do you continue this work of deliverance in every viewer? You continue this move of God happening right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, break the spirit. Thank you, Lord. God is moving right now, guys. People are yawning. People are coughing. People are vomiting right now. I'm reading the chat. Some of you right now are getting a heart of flesh. Yes, you've been having a hardened heart. Some of you are yawning. Yes, oftentimes yawning is a sign the Spirit's leaving you. Oftentimes yawning is a sign that the Spirit is leaving you. Many of you are yawning. I see you saying, I'm being delivered. I'm being delivered. Many of you are being delivered right now in Jesus' name. Complete deliverance now. Complete deliverance. Come on, we're kicking it off right now. We're evicting the Spirit of Leviathan now in Jesus' name. He's going back to the sea. He has no power in your life. Right now, come on. Lots of people saying they're yawning, they're coughing. In Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. If you're receiving this deliverance, start, start praying. Some of you may need to just pray for self-deliverance. Some of you may need to get somebody in the room to start calling this thing out in you right now. Go in Jesus' name. Chest pain, crying, yes, these are all signs. In Jesus' name, go. Heart pounding, feeling sick, that's that spirit right now has to leave in Jesus name some of you may just start manifesting and may now God is revealing that there's deliverance that needs to take place in your life right now in Jesus name the power of the enemy is broken in Jesus name the power of the enemy is broken that serpent is being broken now in Jesus name coughing spitting throwing up I feel sick in my stomach in Jesus name leave now everything must go everything must go Everything must go in Jesus' name. You guys are typing so fast, you broke my screen. In Jesus' name, everything must go now. Father, we just pray for complete deliverance now. Complete deliverance now. My heart is pounding, vomiting, coughing, yawning. I'm reading this, guys. Hundreds of comments coming in. Vomiting, vomiting. Right now, deliverance is happening. Many of you are vomiting, not because the demon comes out when you throw up, because that's your body's response to your gag reflex when the spirit is coming out. I feel lighter. Praise the Lord. Right now, complete deliverance in Jesus' name. Some of you might start, you're starting your manifestation. Someone says, I'm vomiting right now. Right now, complete, 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 complete. Go. Everything must go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Guys, just keep praying. Keep getting that deliverance. If you have a friend or family that can come lay hands on you, keep getting that deliverance, guys. 
What an awesome time. If you're still watching from YouTube, please subscribe. Please show into what God is doing. We love you guys.